People all over the world today are beginning to recognize that the world is changing. That life in many ways is becoming more difficult and more uncertain. With growing economic and political instability now. And the difficulty for people to gain access to vital resources. People everywhere are beginning to feel the pressure of living in a world that's facing great waves of change. These great waves of change are all converging at the same time. They're not just one event, but instead a series of events, a series of colliding events and overlapping events that taken together creates perhaps the most dramatic threat to human civilization and to the well-being of people everywhere that we as the entire human family have ever faced. The great waves of change are coming. Changing climate, violent weather, the loss of food production, the decline in our fundamental energy resources, growing economic and political instability, and now the growing risk of conflict and war over who will gain access to the remaining resources. These are the big currents of change but within them are smaller currents as well. We begin to see how these great waves are impacting one another. How violent weather is destroying food production, for example, or disrupting the flow of energy resources around the world. And how political instability is affecting the lives of working families, for example. People are losing jobs. They're losing their homes. Regions of the world are facing economic contraction and in some cases collapse. We're truly entering into a new reality in the world. We're entering into the great ways of change that together have the power to undermine the fragility of human civilization, to break down relations between nations, to cast groups that are in opposition to each other into a greater panorama of conflict. We have the arid regions of the world becoming more arid. We have agricultural regions being flooded because of violent weather. We have the contraction of various economies and ever increasing instability around the world. This is the beginning of the great ways of change. How they will play themselves out, no one can really predict because there are many great waves of change. If it were only one thing, we could perhaps discern a direction and a sequence of events with greater clarity. But because the world represents a series of interconnected and overlapping systems, economic systems, political systems, uh, resource acquisition, so many different things that the fabric of life now can begin to become really unraveled. We're beyond simply an economic cycle or an economic downturn, as is traditionally considered. We're entering into a different world, a different environment. We're facing a world in decline. And this will require us to unite and to cooperate, to generate human innov innovation, to cease our endless conflicts, which only weaken us in the face of the great ways of change to unite our communities, to become more local in the production of food and other manufactured goods, because sending things around the world will become increasingly difficult as resources become ever more scarce and difficult to acquire. This is a very dangerous time for the human family, but it also gives us an immense incentive to gain a greater cooperation with each other to unite for our mutual well-being, for nations to collaborate to make sure that their citizens can be provided the basic necessities of life, and that we alter our use of the environment, the destruction of our natural environment, that we change our energy resources, that we begin a real shift, a kind of industrial revolution at that scale, but also a cultural revolution changing the way we live and how we engage with one another. 
Technology will certainly be a big part of that. But at a more fundamental level, it's how we as individuals and groups of individuals relate to one another. How we view one another. How we value one another. And in this, there will be a fundamental choice between whether we compete and enter into conflict with one another, or whether we choose another way, a path of resolution and cooperation. Driven now, not by ideology, not by philosophy, but by sheer necessity. It's in the interest of every nation to make sure that every other nation is stable, and that, that its government and its way of life does not collapse in the face of the great ways of change. Because once one nation begins the process of collapse, it's like a domino effect. Refugees spill into other nations. They're pushed over the limit of what they can provide for their people. They collapse. And so you can see here, looking at the world as a whole, how important it is that humanity unite for its own well-being and to build the foundation for a new future a sustainable future, a stable future, a future that's not based upon endless growth and expansion, but a future that's focused upon stability and security. In this, humanity is facing another era of life, a mature phase of life, where we have to outgrow our exuberant but irresponsible adolescence and enter into a more mature, and wise participation in the world if we are to survive and if we are to have a future, a future that will be unlike the past. So the great waves give us this one great opportunity to unite for our own protection. We're now fighting against forces of nature, for we have set in motion change in the environment, change in the climate. We've overused and abused our natural inheritance and our natural resources to such an extent that now we're very vulnerable. We're very vulnerable to not having enough for the world's peoples. And the power of this to undermine everything that we have created that has been beneficial is immense. So this represents a real calling for people to reconsider how they live, where they live, how they travel, how they use resources, and how they're going to function in a world of increasing instability and uncertainty. It is within this arena that a new understanding and a new message for humanity has come into the world to prepare us for the great ways of change, to speak to our deepest, most fundamental spiritual nature and ethical foundation to give us the strength and the power to overcome our self-destructive behavior and our long-standing conflicts with one another. We're unprepared for the great ways of change. We're vulnerable to them. They have the power to destroy human civilization. That is how powerful they are. And therefore, we must begin anew with a new vision and understanding of what will be required in the future and what each person can do to secure their lives and to be a service to others. For that is what is called for now.